emerald. It's a gemstone we've talked about before on this channel. Vibrant green and with a rich history, it's one of the most popular stones in the world, especially for May babies. Did you know that on a per carat basis, top quality emerald can be worth more than diamond? There are a lot of reasons why emerald can be your favorite stone even if you weren't born in May, and today we thought we'd talk about something that makes emerald unique, its inclusions. Emerald, the distinct green member of the beryl family, is found all over the world in three different types of rocks, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. Owing its color to trace amounts of chromium, vanadium, and iron, most emerald today comes from Colombia, Zambia, Brazil, and Zimbabwe. Emerald is rare because beryllium, a necessary ingredient, is an element that occurs in very small amounts in the Earth's crust. You can't make an emerald cake without all the right ingredients. Observation of inclusions in colored gemstones can be essential in determining a gem's identification, quality, and origin. This is especially true of emerald. Under low magnification, most emeralds are said to have a garden of inclusions called a jardin. Here are a few of the things you can find in a natural emerald's jardin. Let's start with three-phase inclusions. Until recently, the observation of three-phase inclusions in emerald was considered an indicator of Colombian origin. However, a recent study by the GIA discovered that emeralds from Afghanistan, China, and Zambia may also contain three-phase inclusions resembling those often found in Colombian specimens. These three-phase inclusions are jagged and contain a liquid, gas, and a solid, the three phases of matter. Three-phase inclusions are normally formed when homogeneous fluid trapped in a cavity separates into three different phases during the cooling process. Colombian emeralds, specifically, are said to be the purest emeralds in the world because Colombian emerald deposits are the only ones on Earth found in sedimentary host rock rather than in igneous rock. The tectonic movements that created the Andes Mountains forced the raw elements of emerald into liquid and gaseous states. We've already done a video about it, and you can check that out here. Another unique Colombian emerald inclusion is called parasite. It's a group of fluorocarbonate minerals. All members of this group are very rare, but parasite is the most common. On its own, parasite as a gem is typically brownish yellow in color and has a hardness of four and a half on the most scale. It lacks brilliance and has low dispersion, and it's mildly radioactive but perfectly safe. Mostly, these stones are of interest to collectors of rare minerals. If you find one in an emerald, well, that's a double whammy. These parasitic crystals as inclusions were reported by the GIA to be found only in hydrothermal deposits of emerald from the Colombian Muso mines. Probably the most unique emerald inclusion is found with the Colombian Trapiche emerald. These patterned gems were first discovered by emerald miners and named Trapiche, the Spanish word for cogwheel. A cogwheel, at the time, was a wheel with interlocking teeth that was used to grind cane sugar. Trapiche emeralds are mined in the eastern Cordillera Basin of Colombia, where the host rock consists of black shale. The uniquely patterned gems consist of a central core of six rays, or arms, and black shale dendrites, a variety of shale that contains abundant organic matter. The shale is crystalline and has a tree-like structure that forms in between the arms and the core due to fluid pressure that exceeds a normal atmospheric value. This is followed by a sharp decompression that causes a rapid crystallization. During this process, the particles of the black shale get trapped between the growth zones of the emerald crystals. Did you know that you can also get trapiche ruby, sapphires, tourmaline, and muscovite, plus a few more? But back to emerald. We did an entire unboxing on our next inclusions, amphiboles, specifically actinolite and tremolite. Within emeralds, they occur as thin, needle-like, or splintery inclusions. For example, emeralds from the Ural Mountains contain blades of green actinolite fibers which look like bamboo. Austrian emeralds from Havakto contain green actinolite or gramatite fibers, and Zimbabwean emeralds from the Sandawana mine contain green curved tremolite fibers. There are other mineral inclusions that can occur across all emeralds, including 
pyrite, calcite, and mica flakes. There are also more rare inclusions like purple fluorite and thin film fluid inclusions in emeralds from Russia. Everything we've covered so far applies to natural stones, but did you know that man-made emeralds can have their own unique inclusions as well? They're a great way to tell the two apart. Under the microscope, synthetic emeralds have some pretty cool inclusions. Hydrothermal synthetic emeralds specifically will have spiky inclusions that look like nail heads. One of the most identifiable inclusions in hydrothermal synthetic emerald are the chevron-like growth patterns or a roiling effect. You may also see heeled, whitish, feather-like or branch-like inclusions in Gilson emerald. Fun fact, in the early 1960s, French ceramist and engineer Pierre Gilson succeeded in growing and producing the first marketable flux synthetic emerald. By the mid-1970s, it was reported that Gilson conducted 95% of the world's market in synthetic emeralds. By the way, he also created synthetic opal. Another cool inclusion in synthetics are phenakite crystals that occur as a byproduct of synthetic emerald growth. Watch out though, these can easily be mistaken for natural inclusions because phenakite occurs naturally as well. It's been found in the Emerald and Chrysoberyl mine on the Takovaya stream near the Ural Mountains where large crystals occur in mica schist. Pretty cool. As far as treated stones, many commercial emeralds are treated with oil or polymer resins. These are injected into the stone, filling internal fractures. This can hide fractures and temporarily enhance the appearance, improving color and clarity. Even with a microscope, detection of this treatment isn't always easy. High magnification may reveal interference colors in the fractures. Sometimes the oil doesn't fill in all the way and you can see gaps. Conversely, a well-filled fracture may display a diagnostic blue flash, which will confirm its clarity enhancement. We should say most of the emerald on the market is treated in some way, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's properly disclosed. Whether natural or synthetic, treated or untreated, emerald holds its place as one of the most popular stones in history. Is it your favorite stone? What about ruby or sapphire? Which one do you think is held in the highest esteem of the big three? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching.